Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at a beautiful tool made by 0451 and it is the Screen Space Global Illumination for Blender. This is something that looks and sounds very surreal, but of course it is here and we're going to take a look at how this actually works. So for those who will be wondering what is global illumination and how does it, you know, come of importance now that we're talking about it for EV in Blender. And the thing is global illumination is a system that models how light should bounce off surfaces onto other surfaces. These lights could be direct, indirect, and rather than being just limited to a particular surface, the light gets distributed across the models that are within reach. So today we're going to dive directly into Blender and see how you can get this going. And of course, if you want to get this tool, you can go over to the link, which is going to be in the description and download this free add-on that might probably make your next EV render look way awesome. So with this said, we're going to dive directly into Blender and right here we have a scene setup. Of course, if you want to install this, you need to go over to edit, go over to preference and you know, you can do all of that stuff. So with Blender open here, I do have a very tiny scene that I've gone through to set up. So this scene consists of two emissive planes and we have just this box, which I went through to cut up and we have the torus right here. So if I simply switch these from EV to cycles, you would see what we have. Excellent. This is exactly what you can get once you're rendering with an engine that supports global illumination. But if we switch this to EV, you can see what we have. And this is actually where the add-on comes in very, very handy. So if I go through and, you know, press N on the keyboard and get this part out, we can actually click on add SSGI. And once you click on add SSGI, you can now notice that we're beginning to get some sort of closely related global illumination that we have with cycles. Now, the only difference here is this is screen space and it makes a lot of sense owing to the fact that EV itself also has a screen space reflection. So right now, if you would like to play with this, of course you can get some cool stuff out of it. We can go ahead and boost the screen space global illumination and punch this all the way up and you can start noticing that we're getting some sort of feedback more like what we have with cycles of course you know not exactly but it kind of makes sense and for this you can also dial in numbers if this is something that you want since it only gives you a limitation of one you can go in there and dial in a couple of numbers so we can also say we want to make this about 100 press enter and you get something cool like that if you like to play with the screen space reflection, you can also play with the thickness of that. And this particular parameter that we're changing here actually deals with the same parameter that you have right here. So if I go through to increase this, you can notice that the thickness increases. And if I try to also play with the trace precision, you would also notice that we also have that trace precision right here. Something else that you can also play with within the parameters is you can choose to disable and also enable the screen space global illumination and also the reflections. So I can punch this all the way up, disable that and enable this all the way. So with these basics out of the way, let's now talk about a much more practical approach to how you would work with this. So what if you have a scene that you've built completely and you want to see if this is going to be ideal for that scene and what are the cons, what are the pros, what are the things you need to know before you actually go through download and start playing with this. So for that, I would go ahead and load up a very simple scene. So the scene which I have loaded up here is the classroom scene that you can get if you go over to blender.org and check out the sample scenes. So with this scene right here, what we're going to do is take a look at what it looks like in cycles. So let's go through and take a look at that. So we would see what it looks like in cycles. It doesn't really look bad. Let's switch this to GPU, go over to sampling and then set this to the viewport, the noise in. Now, the reason why we're doing all of this is so that we can see everything happening real quick. And with this here, if you like to see this in EV, once we go back and switch this over to EV, you would notice that what we have is nothing close to, you know, what we originally have with cycles. So let's try and see what this add-on can do. And for this, I'm going to click on add screen space global illumination and what would happen is the add-on go through calculate the entire scene and then bake certain stuff for us so at this point if i would like to boost the screen space global illumination i can choose to start adding that boost slowly and you can see we have that of course we have this part that's a bit overblown so i'm just going to tone that down slowly about a point like that 
and at the same time you can also choose to play with all of these you know parameters that you have right here if you also have like a multi setup screen which i have right here what i'm going to do is i will also try as much as possible to control the sun since the sun over here seems to be what is controlling the main lights coming in let's see what we're going to get with that so i would also go through and you know play with this so from this standpoint nothing looks bad about this okay from a standpoint like this everything looks pretty cool pretty decent and yes this looks nice but then once you start rotating across your scene you might start noticing that you may be having some way more cleaner renders from some parts and depending on where you're looking at any given time you might also have some less brighter renders so this is still within its first version so i don't really think that's a problem as every software and add-on are always substitutes to update so so far so good this looks pretty so the next scene which we're going to look at is the very default architectural visualization scene and it actually gives us a lot of room to explore and also play with this tool and also to see what and what strengths and you know what and what disadvantages or things that doesn't really work so what i've done is i had gone through to set up two different scenes so we have the first one which is just a very basic one and then we have the second one which will bake so one thing to also keep in mind is when you are setting this up sometimes it takes way more time as it goes through to calculate every single thing that you have and then tries to you know throw in the global or the screen space global illumination around so one thing which you would notice if we move around this scene to a point like so so if we move around the scene to a point like this one thing you notice is we have uh, some tiny artifacts going on here of course you would also notice that we have this looking way more darker than what we have directly here so putting them side by side you can see what we have here versus what we also have here i mean to a large extent you may not necessarily see the difference but then once we go over and start taking a look so i would also switch this on so we can select something and jump right close so once we get pretty close to this we can also choose to play with the thickness and right now you can start noticing that stuff if i choose to boost this a little bit more you may not notice that you know that bluish sort of thing or bluish greenish thingy that's happening there but if i rotate around you can start noticing that it's having a hard time trying to figure out how to cast and also how to work with the global illumination so these are a couple of errors that we're having with this tool right now but if you're thinking about you know working with this for a very minor scene small scene and you don't really care so much about some of these things and probably you get a very good work around some of them then you can consider going over to the link in the description and getting this tool and of course you can go through and play with it so this is definitely going to be about it some other thing which i also found out is this doesn't really work for all of the scenes all right so like right here i do have a scene and this is currently being rendered with cycles and the minute i switch this to ev owing to the fact that i still have all of this thing turned on it still doesn't just work as as good so if i also go in here and dial this all the way to 150 nope it still doesn't work so these are certain things to keep in mind and hopefully the developer will take into account some of these things and also clean them up for production use so tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this Peace.